Welcome back to another Smash Ultimate moveset. Last time I talked about one of gaming's biggest icons from one of its biggest franchises. This time I'm heading back to the world of indie games, with one I talked about recently in a 4 minutes 4 review that I enjoy greatly. That game is SteamWorld Heist, and my newcomer of choice for this episode is Captain Piper Faraday. SteamWorld Heist was released in 2015 as Image Inform's third of seven games, including the upcoming Xbox exclusive The Gunk, with only two of those games not in the SteamWorld universe. This is a universe populated by Steambots, mechanical steam-powered lifeforms that have taken the place of humans before the destruction of Earth drove them into space. This game takes place in space as Piper and her pilot Wonky assemble a ragtag crew of space pirates to help rescue the outskirts from scrappers, free the galaxy from the royalists, and stop the dangerous and mysterious Vectron threat. As for the game itself, it's a 2D turn-based action game where you load out your squad, head into procedurally generated ships and move around taking out enemies with aimed shots, and collect loot. Each crew member falls into a category which limits them to specific weapons, while each having one or two unique abilities. It's a great game that received universally high praise from a company that up until the gunk has been Nintendo first. Of all the indie games that could potentially appear as playable in Smash, Piper and the SteamWorld games are far from the least likely. Now that you're caught up to speed on where Captain Faraday is coming from, it's time to get into what Piper would be like in Smash. Piper and Steambots in general are very, very clunky, reminiscent of rudimentary robot contraptions and not high-tech sci-fi droids. Piper would sit alongside Incineroar and Charizard in terms of weight, and I think would be the slowest character on the roster. Not by much, but like, look at this. Piper would be a hard hitter and hard to approach or KO, but pressuring her would leave her pretty helpless. Piper would of course be updated to 3D, and would normally stand with her gun drawn as she appears in the game, putting the gun on her shoulder for her idle animation. Most of Piper's snappy personality comes from dialogue, so we do need to take some liberties to make taunts from scratch. Up taunt has her take off her hat and give a courteous head nod, side taunt has her give a go go hand motion as if commanding her team forward, and down taunt has her check her gun and maybe give the barrel a spin. I think with her taunts and maybe when she lands or takes hits, you could have some of the flavor text that appears in game also appear and smash above her head, or maybe above her character portrait. Probably my favorite part of her appearance would be her palette swaps. This is her standard appearance, but wielding the scoped magnum which will come into play later in the moveset. Her other colors pull from other characters and factions in the game. A sailor alt based on Seabrass and Billy Gill, a rusty alt based on Rusty from SteamWorld Dig, a soldier alt based on Beatrix, a royalist alt based on them and the Red Queen using the Koenigsmacher, a Vectron alt based on them and Fen using the Scope Spectral Cannon Mark III, a scrapper alt based on them, and finally a musician alt based on Steam Power Giraffe who composed music for the game and appear as characters. With all of that set, let's dig into what Piper would be doing to hold her own. Oh, sorry for the 3DS gameplay, but I didn't feel like buying it again on Switch. Like I said earlier, Piper would not be chasing down enemies considering her terrible speed. She would instead be very tanky, relying on range to keep enemies at bay, and hard hitting shots close up as a last resort or powerful punishers. First let's go through the basics and Piper's less flashy moves. Because of the style of the game, we don't actually see Piper do anything too complicated physically, but based on the old timey tone and what little melee we do see in the game, I decided that many of Piper's physical moves would have a boxer, untrained brawler feel. Her jab would be a simple 1-2 punch combo, most similar to her actual melee attack. Her tilts and dash attack would build on this feel. An F tilt hook punch, an up tilt uppercut, a down tilt low kick, and a shoulder charge for her dash. For grabs, she would pummel with her gun, and other than her forward throw with a short range shot, she would mostly do simple throwing animations, like back throw hauling the enemy over her shoulder. Her aerials would intentionally be pretty bad, like Little Mac, emphasizing the need to stay on the ground. As such, they would be simple and similar to one another a single punch for Nair, short range shots with the sidearm for fair, bear, and up air, and a double kick spike for dare. The sidearm in Heist is a free, weak action, so having it as a weak option to stall enemies felt accurate enough. Moving on to her stronger options that make up the bulk of her utility. For smash attacks, I brought in other weapons that she can't actually use in the game, but that helped fill out the moveset more than her single shot revolver would. I tried to keep them fairly short range though to keep her longer range specials as an important part of her kit. Her F smash would use an SMG to deliver 5 powerful shots one after the other, similar to me gunner. Her up smash would use a shorty or shotgun based on her palette swap as a very short range but deadly blast. 
This would be her strongest smash attack, maybe her strongest move in general. Her down smash would rival that though, shooting two shots with a thumper or grenade launcher that bounced to either side of her for a second before exploding. Now for her specials, which feature some of the core mechanics of Heist while making Piper a zoner with trapper elements. Her neutral special would be firing her primary gun, usually the scope revolver. This shot is different from most weapon fire, as it would utilize the laser sight mechanic from Heist. Holding B would let you freely aim your shot wherever you want, seeing a laser sight as you do. Except in a few specific cases, this shot would not go through platforms, instead bouncing between floors, walls, whatever structures you're aiming at. To incentivize using bounce shots, there could be a marginal increase of damage per bounce, with a max of 6 bounces before disappearing. Side B would also show trajectory and bounces, this time with a scrap grenade that can't be picked up and deals pretty significant damage and knockback. I considered using the mini nuke instead, but I wanted to use something with less range to highlight the range of her neutral B. Up B would be a simple burst upwards with the jump pack, leaving her helpless as she falls, so it's really a last resort. Finally, down B would use an oil grenade. Oil and other sludge appear frequently in Heist as highly flammable puddles that amplify damage immensely. This would be used in the form of the oil grenade, with Piper throwing the grenade down and splattering oil all along the ground. Only one puddle can exist at a time. If the puddle is shot or makes contact with an explosion, it will ignite for massive knockback. My other potential move here was called Cover and would have an unbreakable wall appear in front of Piper as she crouches, similar to Pitt's down B, but I figured I would just use that as a crouch animation and make her more tactically offensive than defensive. For Piper's final smash, I've gone with a move called Steambots Unite. This would be an on-stage blast move like Pokemon Trainer's Triple Finish, where Piper and three other Steambots would fire away at anyone in front of them. I think it'd be cool to use a random three bots each time, but if I had to pick a squad, it'd be Piper, Seabrass, Fen, and Ivansky. That concludes Piper's moveset. There's a good variety of weapons and gear in Steamworld Heist that I could pull from, and to make the moveset cohesive, I avoided using too much. I also couldn't use Piper's signature moves Power Shot and Inspire, as one just makes her next shot stronger and one heals herself and allies around her, neither of which are as engaging as the gear available. But we're not done with Piper yet, as each newcomer brings a variety of content from their game into Smash. Piper's classic mode could mix a few elements from Heist, based around the three different enemy factions in the game. Scrappers with a dingy western style steampunk, Royalists with sharper militaristic diesel punk, and Vectron with sleek electricity based sci-fi robots. Maybe something like Metal Warrior for Scrappers, Metal Captain Falcon for Royalists, and Rob for Vectron. Instead of needing the KO, it could be closer to the loot objective of Heist, grabbing crates or coins. For the Steamworld stage, I've chosen a concept called Heist Ho. There's a few set locations like the main ship and the bars, but I thought a better representation would be a larger scale enemy ship with a randomized layout every time. It wouldn't be too complicated, just changing the placement of layers and ladders instead of Mario Maker's total randomness, and would be about the size of 75M. You could throw in loot crates that spawn items and enemies that appear to antagonize the players. Next for music. This wouldn't be too expansive, and would mainly be a mix of the game's score and the original compositions from the band Steam Power Giraffe. I didn't get to mention them in my review, but they were a really important band for me growing up, so it'd be great to highlight some of their music that appears in the game. I ultimately went with a remix of the theme Heist Ho, two songs based on the battle themes in the game, one of which being a compilation of those similar themes, and five songs from Steam Power Giraffe. I cheated a little bit with Brass Goggles, which was a song that was made before Heist, and The Vast Frontier getting a remix just because I really like that song even if it's not quite battle ready. For spirits, I don't have any specifics like I did for Master Chief or Doomslayer, but they would be made up of the other party members you meet, and three battles based on each enemy faction with one main boss to take out. And finally for me costumes, the only one I really see as a necessary cool addition would be Rusty from SteamWorld Dig. He's Image and Form's main choice for crossovers, and seeing him as a Mii sword fighter with a pickaxe would be pretty great. That covers everything Piper and SteamWorld Heist could bring into Smash. And now for the shortest chances section ever. Piper really doesn't have much of a shot as a potential newcomer. Sure, the SteamWorld games are widely liked and have been promoting Nintendo platforms, but they are indie games which I don't see as much of a playable possibility right now, and even if they are, then I feel that others like Hollow Knight might have more of a chance. Ignoring that, while aesthetically Piper and SteamWorld could bring an entirely new style to Smash, I'm not sure her play style is something people would be clamoring for. Overall, I feel Piper probably isn't a character we'd be seeing anytime soon, and I'd expect to see a rusty Mii Swordfighter costume much sooner. 
Regardless, Team Road Heist is a great game, and I think Piper would be a lot of fun in Smash. That concludes this Smash moveset. Let me know what you think, what you changed, or other indie characters you think could rival Piper to get into Smash. I have a couple moveset ideas, but nothing too concrete right now. They're definitely more out there picks. Until then, please consider subscribing to see those movesets, my moveset discussion series Ready Moveset Go, and all my other content like original music and reviews. Thanks for watching.